Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Fiebig with Fiebig Architecture, and today we're going to be talking about uh, calculating occupant load gross versus net floor areas. Now, you all might understand the difference between a gross and a net floor area, but specifically, we're going to be talking about how those relate to um, an occupant load analysis in a building. Um, and so let's take a look at uh, from the 2018 International Building Code. Uh, first things first, chapter 10, means of egress. And the means of egress is, is of course, how uh, an occupant in a building uh, is able to safely exit that building and, and make it to a, a public, uh, public right-of-way. Um, that is obviously a very important part of safe building design. Another part of, of designing a, a safe means of egress is calculating uh, the occupant load of the building. And of course, that means how many people the building uh, can safely serve. Uh, buildings with, with lots of people think assembly spaces like theaters, uh, churches, um, restaurants where you have lots of lots of people gathering. Uh, you need a lot of exit facilities to accommodate a lot of people. Uh, converse to that, if, if you have a building that, that has a very low occupant load, like, like a warehouse or a storage building, you don't necessarily need as many exits and exit facilities. So calculating the occupant load is, of, of any given building is, is one, of the, uh, one of the most important um, parts of a safe building design. And the occupant load analysis um, this is how you calculate how many people the building can safely accommodate. Things like exit corridor widths, stair widths, exit door widths, uh, exit door counts, locations, all of these things depend on the building's occupant load. So chapter 10, uh, specifically section 1004, this is, this is where you'll find the, the regulations uh, of, for calculating um, these rules. Uh, so as to occupant load, in many public places, you'll see signs like this one, identifying how many occupants the safe, the, the space can safely serve. Uh, I think most people watching this video probably have, have seen signs like this before and, and understand uh, what they're for. Um, but who determines this number? Generally, it is going to be the architect of record uh, who, who will calculate how many occupants the, the building or space can serve as a part of the occupant load analysis. So there are a few code sections that do talk about the requirement to post occupant load. Um, uh, as you can see here, specific to an assembly occupancy, uh, you have to post these signs in a conspicuous place where everybody can see it. Um, and of course, where you have multiple functions of occupant load, meaning different occupant load factors in different uses in the same building, uh, the, the design occupant load, you have to calculate each, each one independently. That, that only makes sense. So when we look at table 1004.5, we have the maximum floor area allowances per occupant. Essentially, when you design a building or space, you'll uh, divide the area of the building by these occupant load factors, and that will give you your, uh, your, your total number of occupants to be in the building. And what you see in this table is that a lot of these occupant load factors, um, well, they all have, they, they all either are calculated as a gross area factor or a net area factor. And you can see that um, every occupant load factor is either to be calculated as gross or net area. And um, well, one of the reasons that this is, this is important, uh, we'll get into, but one thing you, that you may not know because it doesn't say it, in this table is that these terms are actually defined in the code. Both gross floor area and net floor area are defined terms. Now, again, you wouldn't know that just from looking at the table because it doesn't, it doesn't say this, but uh, if you go to the definitions section of the code, that's chapter two, you can actually see that um, floor area gross and floor area net are, are defined. And, um, let, let's take a look at those really quick. So gross floor area is the floor area within the inside perimeter of the exterior walls of the building under consideration, exclusive of vent shafts and courts without, without deduction for corridors, 
stairways, ramps, closets, thickness of interior walls, columns, or features. So that, that's kind of one of the important parts when you're talking about an occupant load analysis is you don't get to dedu deduct corridors, stairways, ramps, closets, and other things. Um, uh, let's look at gross or, or net floor area. Net floor area says the actual occupied area not including unoccupied accessory areas such as corridors, stairways, ramps, toilet rooms, mechanical rooms, and closets. So there, there are plenty of reasons people use gross versus net floor areas, but when it comes to occupant load uh, and your occupant load calculation, the unoccupied accessory areas, that, that's really one of the big differences here. You saw in the, the gross floor area, you have to include those things. You have to include corridors, stairways, ramps, closets, et cetera. Whereas in a net floor area, you don't. You don't have to count corridors, stairways, ramps, toilet rooms, mechanical rooms, and closets. And of course, whether your floor area is to be calculated based on the gross area or the net area is dependent on the use of the space. So let's take a look at a few examples and, and it'll, it'll, it'll make sense once we kind of talk through it. So functions of spaces um, such as what we're seeing here for uh, air, airport buildings, like you can see uh, in this part of table 1004.5 or a mercantile area, like a shopping mall. These are gonna be based on the gross floor area because in, in, in spaces like these, it is more common for all usable spaces to be occupied at the same time. Uh, think about airport terminal, well, think about, think about a shopping mall. In a shopping mall, the, the corridors, the restrooms, the, the shopping stores, et cetera, they likely can all be occupied simultaneously by, by, different, by different occupants. It's not unusual for all of these spaces to be occupied at once, which is why the code wants you to account for that. That's why it's a gross area factor here, because these spaces likely are gonna all be occupied at the same time. Now, let's uh, take an example contrary to that. Something like um, uh, a set, an assembly space without fixed seats or an educational, uh, let, let's, take, let's look at the educational spaces. That's gonna be based on a net floor area because in such spaces, it is generally expected that the occupants will not likely be in all occupiable spaces at once. So for example, in a school building, a student will likely either be at his or her desk, in the corridor, or in the restroom, but not all at once. So these spaces will not be occupied simultaneously. So really, that's a good way of thinking about it. When you're looking at, at um, the, the occupant load factors, gross versus net, um, a, a good way to think about it is, is whether or not it's, it's likely that all of those spaces are going to be occupied at the same time, uh, or if those spaces are likely not going to be occupied at the same time. Um, and that's gonna give you a clue as to why a gross or net area uh, factors is to be used. So with that, that's, uh, that's today's lesson. Uh, I do hope that that was useful and information informative for you. Um, again, my name is Michael Feebig with Feebig Architecture. If, you, if you'd like to learn more, uh, please visit our website. That's www.feebigarch.com. Or you can email us at info at feebigarch.com. We're always happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, and with that, um, that concludes today's lesson. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time.